when um, we saw the efficacy in the first patient, before drug introduction, again, we did some MRI. And when we started the drug, we took plenty of pictures, we did biological sampling, MRI, CT scan, and so on. When we started the drug, we had no idea about what to expect. And then taking pictures, because this is a really disesthetical disease. But when we saw that some things were changing, we took thousands of pictures of this patient from every position, and then we repeated this imaging. So the symptoms, the thing that the patient are complaining about, it is important, of course, to not them. The patient told me, oh, I have less fatigue than the week before. Uh, I have less pain. But you need to note everything, to quote everything. But you need more objective. And that's what we have tried to do, objective endpoints. Doing this MRI in this first patient, we targeted a vascular malformation into the abdomen. And we monitored this vascular malformation over time. But we had no idea if this would correlate the clinical improvement would correlate to a reduction in the size of this malformation. Fortunately, that was the case. And that's why we did the same thing. We had the same kind of approach with the other patients. So I guess it's extremely important. And the, in the EPIC-P1 clinical trial, what is interesting is that at our center, I would say that 90% of the patient had this MRI pre and post treatment. But this was not the case in all the centers, it's sometimes difficult to have an MRI uh, because uh, for several reasons. And if you check the data, you can see that some patients had no MRI prior or after because the follow-up, I mean, was not determined by a clinical trial. It was just uh, um, a compassionate use program. So the physician in the US, in Australia or elsewhere, they could do whatever they want. They were just uh, aware that we were doing MRI prior and post-treatment. But if they didn't want to do that, they, 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 could, uh, uh, they could avoid MRI. And I would say that two thirds of these physicians did MRI that allowed us finally to have this conclusion that 74% of the patients have a reduction in terms of volume malformation. So it's extremely important, I suppose, to have standardized guidelines to monitor this patient. And this is the case for all types of disorders. For a patient with some neurological anomalies, you may think about some specific tests prior to and drug introduction and then after drug introduction for some patient with, uh, I don't know, with bleeding, you may monitor the, uh, the number of bleeding events per week and uh, how uh, often it appears once you have introduced the treatments and so on. So for each patient, you may try to determine a specific endpoint, but something that is hard and measurable.